Yeah, no, because, no because, because that would make it surely a security if we do that. It already is one. Can you explain that further? Why is it a, a security? So the company started with zero dollars, right? Like, and you normally when you start a company, the way you raise money is you issue equity. And what equity is, is the share of ownership. So if you, if you theoretically can get 51% more equity than like the owner, you become the new owner of the company. And so like, if that's traditionally how you, uh, how you raise capital is that you go, you go out into the equity markets and you, you basically sell ownership in your company to people. So um, you actually have like a legal backing if anything happens. So like, let's say hypothetically, this guy runs off with, all, with everyone's money and the, or like he goes bankrupt, whatever. And he built these turbines. Like you talk about these turbines. Let's say he actually did it. He builds like this, this huge turbine farm or whatever, but then the company goes bankrupt. If you guys have a token, you have no claim to any of those assets like of the company. You don't have any claim to like any money that's left over or the turbines or nothing. No patents, yes. nothing. If you have actual ownership in the company, you do have legal like claims to that stuff. Well, well, brain, that is exactly the reason why uh, Safe Moon token is not a security because you have no ownership in the company. Is but it a governance raise, token? Raise, Isn't it a governance raise token? token? They raise they raise money to yeah. fund the company with it though. Is no, it a governance they, token? No, no, we don't know that. We don't know that, brain. You're we do. I, we do. They take money out of the liquidity pool. I, th I think I think John uh, said it in a few uh, AMAs that they have their other uh, investors in the company, not necessarily from the. Read what I posted in the nest. Okay, the Howey test. It doesn't pass the Howey test. It is a security. So yeah. how how does it not uh, pass the uh, how does it pass the Howey test? Like how? I'm pretty sure that most cryptocurrencies don't pass the Howey test. And we're going to see that with this XRP trial. <laughs> you know, and they're also talking about ETH getting reviewed as well. Yeah, crypto, crypto daddy, pass... you're, you're 100% right. And that's why you'll find that a lot of Bitcoin maxes also say stuff like ETH is security. Like, so Rage, no, no, your I, question, I about... Rage, your question I, to yeah, Howey test, it's, it's, I think there is the point, a... Sorry, uh, because there, to, I, I mean, altcoins do not want to pass the Howey test. Because if you pass the Howey test, that's when you are considered a, a security. They all do, though. Like every single one of them does. Yeah, I know, I know that, but I just want to know how, how, how. Why. Yeah. So, so oh, Gary oh, Gensler, oh, Gary oh, Gensler actually has YouTube videos on what actually how he test is. It's a short four minute video. He does many things for uh, early kids or uh, like freshmen in college. <laughs> he does videos, so. It's very short videos. You can actually understand uh, how securities laws work and everything uh, with short videos. They just watch one or two every day, and you can actually understand what how we test is. But my question is: Is Safe Moon a governance token, or what is it? Is it an LP token or a governance token? If it's a governance token, that itself is said. It just in front of it that it's a security. I think I think it, it's just a, a utility token. That's it. And utility tokens are not uh, under the purview of the SEC. Okay, so what's your utility? Like, like uh, let me explain further with that. Uh, that me like it means uh, the 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 token is not directly uh, uh, that do not directly affect the valuation of the company. So even if the the com the token goes to its basic like really really low price. The company can still continue to operate. It, it's not. It's not directly related, and so that's it. It's not a security. Okay. So let me run a parallel for that for you. So if Apple goes down to zero, Apple still stays in business because it sells products, but the shareholders will go away because the stock price is going down or the company is doing something wrong, and everyone run away. So in order to for make them to not run away, they still have to have their shareholders. Hence, they need to have the stock price up. So if you're saying the safe moon is goes down, you will also lose all the people who have invested in it. And you're not having a community anymore. So who who exactly is the company that, building for? And unless they, they bring the products company? out. That's the, exactly. that's the thing, though. That's the thing, though, because uh, the, the value of the token in the liquidity pool is completely different from the equity, equity within the company. They have different investors there. So... The, the tokens are just utilities if you would like to avail of the products of the company. That's, that's it. It's like, it's like a laundry shop where you have your token. That's it. It doesn't affect the valuation of the laundry shop. 
and people can speculate with the value of the token among themselves, but that's not that's out of the company itself or the laundromat. Then why does it make sense? You see how that's worse, right? You yeah. see how that's worse. Yeah, right? the, I mean, like with with that logic, you're literally saying that Chuck E. Cheese tokens are a good investment. <laughs> No, nope, hey, because if you go to you you in the UK, uh, the FCA, which is the equivalent of the SEC here, oh, uh, there in the United States, if you're a utility token, you're outside of the purview of the FCA. Stop so saying it's a so Chuck E. Cheese that's token. Not, that's not how it works. Because Bitcoin that's, that's... is orange, bro. Stop saying it's a Chuck E. Cheese token. So, so, so to to come back to you, Red, it, it's it's like you're saying Pokemon cards. Or have value, but they're not related to the actual Cartoon Network Pokemon um, series, and and I don't, you're, right. So if Pokemon, I, I, I don't know about uh, Pokemon. So I'm not interested in Pokemon. But anyway, let me just say this: you um, should because fucking first edition Charizards are going yeah, for like ten thousand yeah. dollars. I'm not interested <laughs> yeah. in Pokemon either. Yeah, I know, so I know. I definitely it, agree. Anyway, uh, let me just say this: uh, I believe Bitcoin is the king of a store of value even better than on the gold than gold but uh, it's just so uh, difficult for for to use it in everyday life like buying in the shop you need another uh, layer so of it's easier to like use lightning. safe moon yeah like lightning but that is not bitcoin let me just say it's it's lightning so i mean we need the help of new innovations for bitcoin to really be yeah, you already have usd people. you already have usd for that you just said that. we have light. We, you said we have lightning. How is it that lightning doesn't work? No, I mean, I mean, we keep saying that the Bitcoin is is really, really this and that and that. It's it's just uh, everything else is 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 nothing. I mean, what? Oh, I'm trying to I say don't that, say that. No, we need we we need the help like of lightning to make it uh, be usable to everyday people in their everyday lives. And that's what okay. Sapun is trying to avoid. Uh, that that mistake that being not not being able to adapt to whatever happens in the future. That why that's why they said it's not yet confirmed, but they said Dude. that the, the new blockchain will be yeah, okay, okay. adaptable. Hang on, hang so on, I don't on, know. Hang on, hang on. So time out, time out. So you've changed your pitch here like three times, but I'll address. I want to address this one most of all. Okay, but the, let's like I really want you to just think about how this conversation has gone and how you've literally changed your pitch three times here at least as to like why this is like like we've kind of like explained to you like two other good reasons why why this is not a good idea and now we're saying that safe moon is going to be um uh more let there's it's going to be more frictionless in that that's your your value proposal is that safe moon is going to be easier for the average person to transact in with bitcoin and that is just dishonest on its face and by by saying that rich beer i think everyone comes from a humble perspective to make you understand to more than trying to make you or anyone else who's sharing the same thoughts um not to not to like get on you or something um it's it's um, just to shift the perspective and try to be intellectually honest to what you're trying to say and again after you realize that it is totally up to you to do whatever you want um and uh, no one's saying bitcoin should be 100 percent of your portfolio no one really has 100 percent bitcoin because they own stocks so that technically comes out as something else but that's the total different argument uh, but yeah, I just we I think I think uh, I, you go ahead. I think you misunderstood. I'm not saying that Safe Moon is better than Bitcoin. I'm just saying that it's own use. It's own use. And I really believe that Bitcoin. If you want to protect your money and preserve your money, you go to Bitcoin. That's that's the most uh, trustworthy of all coins for me. But. All other coins, not all, I mean, not all, but some of it, many of those altcoins, they, they, I believe they also have their own uses, respective uses. Yeah, we, right. this, is, this just goes back to the argument we, what we heard earlier, which is that they don't care about decentralization, they just want to make money, which is fine. Um, what, what Titan was saying, like, we just got to, like approach the conversation from from a, like a, a place of honesty. Like we have to be honest with ourselves, 
and then we can like move forward. Can can I ask a question? Why would you want to use Bitcoin for transactions, considering how valuable it's it's been pitched out? Sorry, how valuable it may become in in over future years. Good, okay, good question. Yeah. Okay, it's a good question. I value because my local businesses. I value my local community. And when I go to the local uh, farmer and I buy my raw milk, I want to give him something of value and not blood money from the government. Yeah, but and after, after some point, after some point, crypto, like what happens is that like I don't want to hold any dollars, period. I want to have all BTC. And so like if business, if more businesses and places are like accepting BTC, it makes my life easier. And I literally like if, let's say if the, uh, the coffee shop and the gas station and the grocery store and everyone's accepting BTC, I don't have to hold dollars anymore because it's like there's no reason to hold them. They don't keep their value and everybody else around me is accepting BTC. You see what I'm my, saying? Question, my question to that then is what like if we adopt that logic, we should be carrying around gold bars and chopping off a bit to to purchase milk and from the we, we should we should but we have something better <laughs> but, but, but we don't okay exactly we have something better we have something which is this is better is better quick trading now he, now hear me out hear me out okay I'm not saying that safe moon is better in any way than Bitcoin okay we're one year olds but my point is is that safe moon is moving more towards um its utility will be in transactions you know we we don't okay. expect to, we don't expect hang on we don't expect safe moon to go to hundred dollars a token even though some people believe that i don't expect it even to hit one dollar i think one cent is where it's going to be at and it's going to float around there too many holders too many people buying too many people selling i think it will float around the one cent mark and people will use it for transactions because it's okay. so quick okay so so when you when you just came into the transaction space there's already big leaders like xlm like stellar um, you can go between exchanges, right? So you have, when you come into the whole transaction world, you have expanded your competitors to the whole world. Visa, MasterCard. So you're trying to say SafeMoon is going to compete. Yeah, Lightning Network and uh, Bitcoin, <laughs> which all it cares about is transactions. That's all it fundamentally cares about. And we as humans actually bring value to it in different ways. That's a whole nother topic. But if you're oh, saying I'm... SafeMoon is trying to compete in the transactional space, you have way more competitors than what you're actually, you guys actually said before is SafeMoon statistics of NFT and crypto and everything. You, you're you're trying to fight real people, real companies uh, yeah, when it yes. comes to transactions. Yeah, we're taking on the uh, big fish, bro. Yes, you're taking no, on, no, on the big on that, fish. On that point, I know all about XRP. Uh, one of you two. Hold on. Both of you are talking together. Uh, let, let, let me Raj, just finish oh. my point. All right, go <laughs> ahead, crypto, then, Raj. Go ahead. Pardon me, Raj. I, I do apologize. Man. I need to go in and see my kids. I just want to wrap this up. Um, look, I know there's competition with XRP, XLM. The speed in that network is, is unbelievable. But there's 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 going to be more than one winner in crypto. Just like there's like just like the entire world doesn't use the USD to trade currency to, to buy items of, of clothing and whatnot. They really there's do. More, eh, man, I live in New Zealand. I haven't seen the fucking US dollar, mate, in, in a very long time. Okay. Um, uh, what was my point though? My point is is that there won't be one cryptocurrency to rule them all, even though some Bitcoin maxes. There's a one gold though. Yeah. There is one goal, but there's also silver. There's, there's many. Like we can we can argue this all day long, right? My point is, is that there is space for Safe Moon. Will that space be as big as some of the Safe Moon holders? What what they think it'll be? No, I don't believe so. But there is there is space, and I do the believe space. The, the thing is, you're comparing the value of Safe Moon to the value of these other materials, but there is no value to Safe Moon if there's other things that are doing exactly what it does and yet better or longer with a better track history or decentralized or all these other things. So then when you don't have a better or anything of substance, then it's not worth it. Then it's not enough space in the community for it, actually, and it will be obsolete. Yeah, but we said the same thing about eight fucking years ago before it took off. You know, I mean, we're still in this. That's, that's my underlying argument this entire time is that you're. We're, 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 it we're is being for, fueled for, by a bunch of fucking to, federalists uh, and bureaucrats, no, and it's a fucking psyop. It's a psyop. 
Let's let let's let Raj go. Raj Raj is waiting. Raj, go ahead, man. Uh, yeah. To Card's point, yeah, I think SafeMoon is is gunning for those companies because John basically said that the EU e money license is basically in the bag. So I don't know if you know the the implication of that. It's practically like it's a it's kind of like a, a bank really, or precursor to a bank. But then why why are we even like in why are we even in cryptocurrency then if we're just going back to banks? Yeah, well, I invented a wheel, bro. <laughs> what are you a wheel? <laughs> no. SafeMoon's just here really to make money. You guys, are shooting, yes. you guys are shooting yourselves in the foot, guys. So every time every No, time... I I have a I have a question. I mean it, it would be and this is the only question I'll ask. I came up for one question and it was if MasterCard, Visa, and all of these other cards own the market, why do gas stations and all of these other people use they like they put the one thing in their store, but then they tell you to use the other thing that charges them cheaper every single time on all their transactions? That's what they call a free market, right? But that that's what I'm asking is I I don't understand. Uh, uh, what are you saying? You're saying. Some people ask for cash and not credit card transaction. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no. no. I'm talking about the fact that in, in, the, in the U.S., right, you use MasterCard, Visa, Discover, whatever you use, uh, typically gas stations, other transactional places, they've moved to Clover. They've moved to multiple other transacting. Yeah, yeah. Great point. That's that. So... It depends on what transaction fees um, the the retailer or the person who is selling you goods uh, can afford. So the more cheaper versions they can find, they will they will take it. And because of the competition on the other side, it seems like Clover and all these guys uh, are 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 caught telling them to give them less money just for the transactions to go through them. So that's the whole point of again transactions. It's like you choosing. USDT or USDC or XLM or whatever you want to choose as your mode of transportation at that moment of time, whichever is cheaper, you're going to use that. So, again, I don't know if SafeMoon is going to be in the gas stations and be like, hey, give me some SafeMoon. You have zero fees. You just pay for what you get and call it good. If that's the case, yes, everyone will go to SafeMoon. The, the guy who is being in between doesn't really care as long as his fees is less. He'll just choose that. There is oh, a fee, though. Don't they have like a ten percent transaction for transactions? That's what that's what they're doing. No, it's a two percent transaction fee. No, it's supposedly. just two percent. Not... Hold you on. guys are seriously conflating things. No, no it's ten percent if you sell it. It'll be two percent for transactional fees. Right. Okay. I wanted to clarify. I wasn't for or against anything. I was just talking about the fact that Mastercard, Visa, all of these main staples that we're talking about are. While while they're they're the main staples, if you go into places, there are a whole bunch of other ways to transact with those same cards that people are skipping because of the fact that it costs more and people are offering cheaper transaction fees. That's it. Yep, pretty much. Th there's a lot being conflated. I guess they okay. can just want to get what we can get. Well, well, hold on, hold on. I think, I think there's, what's there's happening. currencies, okay? And in this case of a gas station, for instance that decides to use um, a smaller company point of sale system instead of maybe like their uh, credit card merchant issued equipment um, and, and going through a different network to execute transactions that's still using the U.S. dollar as the currency and could also still be using the Visa or the MasterCard as the payment card on those other point of sale systems it's like incredibly kind of foggy at that point, like what we are even talking about because person could walk in with a card with a visa or a MasterCard logo on it and swipe it on a Clover point of sale system. And how does this relate anyways to crypto? How does it relate to Bitcoin? I mean, the whole idea of Bitcoin is that it's a, it's its own network. It's a separate currency and it's also its own payment rails entirely. And so that's kind of what kicked off this whole Cambrian explosion of cryptos, because the theory is, is that 
everyone who makes their own token is going to have the potential to have their own rails. What ended up occurring is the vast majority of these things are created on top of someone else's network, Ethereum being one of the best examples. You have thousands upon thousands of other tokens and projects that are built on top of that network. And they have to basically play by the rules of that network. And those are major implications as anyone who's used that network knows as far as fees and performance, how fast the transactions go through, security, if the, if the record of transactions could be rolled back, you know, all these concerns. And so really the important thing to realize is what's changing how business is done. What's actually changing the world? And I think you can argue pretty well that Bitcoin is fundamentally bringing an entirely new paradigm to things. And what I think a lot of Bitcoiners are pushing back on the crypto thing is that in the end, the different crypto projects, the vast majority of them, have made so many sacrifices in that actual paradigm shifting nature of things in order to just compete with each other and end up with fast transactions or cheap transactions, or in some cases, just absolutely no decentralization. In some or cases, absolutely no security. The hardest. But I mean, the, then I would bring you back to uh, Visa card and MasterCard transactions at the very beginning of their period. Does anybody ever remember doing a Visa or MasterCard transaction when it first became a thing to do? Bro, I remember when they used to put your card on that little device and they would swipe it across and you'd get a carbon copy piece of paper because it had just rubbed the highlighted numbers and, and information on your card on some carbon paper. Yeah, just like the, there was uh, two carbon, carbon copy, carbon copy, it got handed to you. How long did you, do you think the process took for the bank to actually take the money out of your account? Well, but see, that's the interesting thing. That actually hasn't changed much at all. And that's the magic trick is that with, with all these things that feel very fast and feel very instant gratification, it's actually being deferred. The settlement is, is still to this day decades later being totally deferred and what happens is that gas station at the end of the day still puts in bundles together all the transactions from that day and submits them for settlement at the end of the day it could be 12 hours after you already came in and got your soda and your chips and and your gas and you walked out you swiped your card it said approved you feel good you're on your way but that transaction doesn't actually settle it doesn't begin to settle until the end of the day. And then it could take days still for those things to settle. Those transactions could be clawed back. Those transactions could be charged back. Those transactions are all just credits and debits in databases. But it's, it's, it's the reason that it takes that long. There's so many transactions. I mean, worldwide, how many transactions happen on Visa and MasterCard daily? Right, but the I'll, point I'll is, is what up. I just said is it, it, it causes you to take a pause there and say, what is a transaction? Is it just that thumbs up approval, even if that gets settled days later? Is that the transaction? Because I think no, Bitcoin's I mean, like causing you to question that. That's what because Bitcoin might take 10 minutes. Sometimes it can take an hour for a transaction to finish, but that is actual final settlement. That's like literally like cash getting delivered across the world from no. any user to any other user, finally, without any ability to undo it. I understand what you're saying, but I mean, I, I think what, what some of these uh, lower market cap projects are trying to accomplish is that you can bundle transactions faster and quicker than Visa and MasterCard ever could. And, and you're, you're bringing up great points. The fact that, yeah, I scan a card, it says approved. That doesn't mean anybody has the money in their bank account. I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, and in a lot yeah, of cases, seems, you're, it, you're it, spending money that you quick, never quick had because you're just borrowing money. Quick thing to see. It looks like it's about $30 billion for MasterCard and $11 billion for Visa. Or, I'm sorry, the other way around, $30 billion for Visa and $11 billion for Mastercard. It, how much it, of what? Fractional, it's only daily volume. Reserve banking, uh, right? That's that's what spurred all this stuff. Like because of fractional reserve banking, you just send a hash to the other person, and when you see 
you did a transaction in the gas station and you open your uh, credit card app or whatever app you have, it says pending for two days and then it clears. So basically, do you really care about that final settlement or do you care about the transaction of the good and you paid for it and they actually let you walk through? That's yep. too big to look at it, right? So but the final, problem, settlement, problem. final settlement comes into picture when you have bigger things to do in your life, which actually affects you if it's not instant. I, I, I would I would slightly push back on that and I would ask you to maybe reconsider that because it doesn't matter until we're in the point of a financial crisis. If you go back to 2008, when you had the whole credit market seizing up and banks literally on the verge of collapse, and we did lose two financial institutions in the United States, Lehman and Bears both collapsed, and all the other banks got bailed out to the tune of like $800 billion. Um, yeah, you're it totally fucking matters because the whole thing yeah. is a system of debits and credits. It's all based on debt. And if you go about your life, like I think most of us have up until a point where you just assume somebody's like responsible and, and making sure this shit's not going off the rails. When you have this like awakening, whether you it's around Bitcoin or, or something else, you, you realize, oh my God, this shit's been completely off the rails for a long time. And the whole system is incredibly fragile and on the verge of collapse once again, this time on an order of magnitude higher than it's ever been before. So all these questions of decentralization, all these questions of actual collateral versus some kind of debt or loan, these are really, really important issues. And so if you determine that something that purports to be new and innovative is really just kind of some fancy wrapping paper on the same old scheme, that should be a big red flag. And that's sure enough what we see in crypto all over the place are these pump and dumps and these things that are falling short. Look at the wormhole thing that happened. Some Gee. private capital company had to come up with like 300 million. What was it? It was like some absurd amount that they had to just like drop ETH in to prevent yeah, the whole like thing million. from collapsing. And it's like, Everything is really riding the razor's edge from that point of view. So this is not just about like, hey, what's the features and what's the use case? And, and is this going to return Can I add a yield? To that real quick, dude, when you're done, I just want to add. Yeah, you know, my last yeah. sentence, because I'm almost just out of breath, is like, you know, the, the whole world right now today, this is not like a future far off thing. We are in the midst of a currency crisis and a debt crisis globally. So this shit is all around all of us and it really matters. It's not just a matter of opinion. Oh, I like safe moon better than I like Bitcoin. It's not about that. It's about, is your money safe? Is your money actually yours? Is your money somewhere where you don't have to trust some other human beings to act right in order for the shit not to get ruined? That's what it's about. In 2017, I had a very similar conversation with a person like TC, and I was on the other side buying shit coins, thinking I was going to trade and ETH and get all kinds of fucking gains, and I would be driving a Lambo, and then the bear market came, and I learned about Bitcoin, and now I'm on this side of the conversation talking to you safe mooners who have been in this for less than a year. I really hope that you guys understand that where we're coming from is a position of tr of love, genuine, like trying to educate people. And when you guys get rug pulled four years from now, we want you to come back to Bitcoin and not have a bad taste in your mouth on the whole crypto space or whatever, uh, even though, you know, it's Bitcoin, not crypto. Just remember this conversation four years from now. 100% on the show. I appreciate well that. Said. I appreciate that. To, um, to kind of punctuate uh, the current subject, I put a post in the nest uh, from the former BlackRock executive, Edward Dowd, and I'm going to let him speak for himself, but he pretty much explains what TC just, just said at the end of his speech. 
Yeah, all the, the smart money and like the global governments of the world are like awake to the fact that there is a global financial crisis happening right now. It's happening in very slow motion, but it is happening. And so like to TC's point, like a lot of us, I mean, a lot of people in Bitcoin are here because we're trying to protect ourselves from that. Like that's ultimately what we're looking to do. Uh, what's up, Dark Moon Bay? I see you have your hand up. Hi, I just wanted to say like, I love what you guys do. Um, I think a lot of the safe moon people really misconstrue what you guys say and take it as a tax. And in reality, you're just talking about what you have concerns about, but I feel like they also misconstrue what John's actually trying to do. Um, he's building out the company, which is harmonious with the crypto. And now he's going out and building use cases for crypto. Um, only 4% of the world uses crypto right now. Who, who's John? Uh, the CEO. Oh, is that the day they were talking about? Jesus, Titan. <laughs> okay, I, no, I don't know. But, but you guys, it, it's like whether it's John or whether it's Vitalik or whether it's Charles or whether it's any of these people, these are human beings. You know, it's it's something, if you do a deep dive in Bitcoin and you really, really put your honest, open mind into it, you're going to start learning about this force of incentives. It's actually, it's actually one of the things that Satoshi like understood so like geniusly is this idea of human incentives. And it's all over the place. It's probably like one of the ways that you can think about like, what is the one thing that ties together all this like fucked up shit? And it's just that people are corrupt. And people are going to do things for their own benefit, not for other people, because people are not saints. And so whoever this guy is that's like leading that project, he can tell you, who are you all kinds of things you talking about. I'm talking about human fucking beings, dude. No, I'm one of them. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the bottom line is we just um, the, the bottom line is it's just a different investment thesis. You guys are, are building or you're investing in a company, and I've said before that's fine. But it's um, I I personally myself came to the space for the decentralized money, and it's like when I, when that's my investment thesis, like there really is no second best than Bitcoin. I agree with that, hundred percent. But I feel like what John's trying to do um, is going to help Bitcoin in a huge way. I disagree. I think it has nothing to do with it, man. Um, well, the only the only thing I can give you, and some guy brought up the point earlier, is that yes, uh, this thing did get a big following, and it did bring a lot of people into crypto. But that's like the only thing. That the, the sad thing is that, like to Amish's point, a lot of us here have been on the other side of this table, where we're new and we're getting in, and we're trading shit coins, and we think we're going to get rich overnight, and we get burned. And so, like, that's why, I mean, that's why I like to have these and conversations. do you think me because... getting burned by shit coins increased my uh, trust in Bitcoin or made it more difficult for me to trust Bitcoin? And the answer is up to you. But I'm telling you, like, that's something you really need to think about. And if you're really doing the work, if you're really trying in this space to, like, learn, like, how this shit actually works, you would be researching Bitcoin. Yeah, three, three I'm ethos. Just, I'm just going to turn around and say one last thing before I drop down. Yeah, uh, go ahead, man. Crypt, crypto traders, only 5% make it. So 95% of the people that are sitting here talking right now have any idea what the fuck they're talking about. And, uh, you know, I, I got into the space. I diversified myself. I'm, I'm Ethereum. I'm NFTs. I'm some other stuff like that. I like Bitcoin, I like other shit, but, and I mean, I, I just have to be honest, I never put in more than I ever expected to get out, and I mean, if I get crushed, I get crushed, that's it. I think that's like such an important point, because it's a it, it's possibly like an, a, a, a better way for some people to frame it, because it's a different way to frame it. I, instead of saying, you know, this thing over here is good and all these things are bad, Look at it from the point of view of, you know, what what could you actually hold on to for a long period of time and not trade? I got burned trading. I used to trade all kinds of shit coins. 
It's only yeah, in the last too. two years that I completely like changed my whole outlook on everything because the trading wasn't going well. And then I learned that all these things that I was buying and holding on to were very fragile and had no solid ground underneath them. So this is a great way to look at it is just try to pretend for a second that whatever you're holding, you're still holding five or 10 years from now, let alone longer time frames. But think about like from here to the end of the decade versus just what's it going to do this year or this quarter or this, you know, week or month. Like think about it in terms of like, I'm going to hold this shit until 2030. What's going to happen? And that's a better way to look at it in some ways. Cause now it's not like, Hey, you have to pick Bitcoin or, or you're making a mistake. It's like, try to assess things from the point of view of, you know, what can you actually hold that long? Because then that forces right. you to look at what can I actually believe in? What's verifiable? What, what's actually proven? Because then you really start to see like how much of a speculation and how much uncertainty lies in a lot of these things when you look at that time frame. Yeah, three ethos of Bitcoin, man. It's do your own research, not your keys, not your coins. Don't trust verify. Don't even trust what I say. Verify it, and if you think it's correct, go ahead. The three ethos, and as I always say, BTC before everything you see in the crypto world. <laughs> yeah, don't, tr don't, trust any, don't trust anybody up here. Like, verify everything for yourself, everything we're telling you. You got a lot of speakers, bro. Remember, I, I have I have one last question. Do you guys remember follow the flow? Like that. that, no, tell that, us about that it. Was, that is that was, like a rapping thing? Where you that's rap what I remember like in my flow? subconscious. That's how I found the egg and became a human. That's, that's I like, like that, dude. Egg and a human. Bro, how bar could I even consider you human, bro? Although I think that was, in fairness, that was more follow the fallopian. Oh yeah, you were. You remember you you were supposed to buy. He he was gonna give you all the information if you just bought one of his wells. It was like a ten thousand ten thousand uh, piece thing. I got two ears, bro. I'm listening. Keep it going, bro. Nah, I'm not gonna keep it. That's DJ. <laughs> no fucking shot. I can't even see your. You got a picture of your duck. I can't even see it, bro. Where's the picture? He came to see on here. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> What's up, DJ? Oh, I didn't even know that was you, bro. It's been like three weeks since I've talked, so yeah. I missed you, man. How's it? How you been? Hello. Good morning, everyone. Oh, hi, FK. What's up, man? Good hey, evening. FK. What's up, man? Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, whoever is representing in this place, uh, uh, Safe Moon. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a holder from April uh, of last year. And I've seen all kind of uh, stuff happening. Uh, people taking out money out of it in V1, everything. Uh, but in V2, when we migrated, before migration, there was a hack on Bitmart. Uh, uh, in that hack, uh, all the coins were gone and the price came down like 50%. Uh, after we migrated to V2, Safemoon have given Bedmart all these coins without any charge from from liquidity pool. We don't have a check and balance on them, which affects our price as well. So how was none of them is answering anything. So I, I don't know. So okay, if if someone can answer why they have given these coins, why, and, why they uh, give why they gave the coins to Bitmart back, or yes, they magic, or they magically found, so so they say they magically found a wallet that had a certain amount of billion of Safe Moon. Hey Roy, you sound knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah. How how what's the what's the supply of Safe Moon? Five eighty five trillion coins. Billion. Is that like? Is no, that it's fixed? It's, it's no, it's just a circulating supply. Yeah, but like they can issue more coins when they want to, right? Yeah, they can. Yeah, but they they, they burn them or whatever. So you know, two percent. The they burn two percent. I saw this on their website. I, I just started looking at this and I came to this room. 
they do 2% token burn. It's all single digit percentages for token burn or liquidity providing when this, when this, just the circulating supply is 585 trillion, but someone said they took off one zero. So it's 58 trillion. And if they say they took off another zero, it's five. Trillion. I mean, but it might as well trillion. be, it might as well be but, infinity but, though, right? Cause mm-hmm. like, like with that many tokens, like, I mean, it's these numbers are like near impossible for your brain even to like think about. Like, what they, they, do? they just put a shitload of tokens on the market so that the the dollar value is very low. So it's like zero point zero 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 one or whatever, and everybody right, but buy like a hundred quadrillion tokens. But if they could just whip up another trillion as they feel they need to, like w- there's no sort of boundary they cannot to... make tokens i don't know who's telling you that they cannot add to their supply that's not true what well, why how what's the mechanism that prevents them from making I more not, tokens I, don't, I do not know the mechanism i'm just telling you they don't add to their supply it's me oh, well, John, is it John just someone told it. you that John will not add new tokens so he said that is the mechanism <laughs> No, from what I, from I, what I understand, though, add tokens is not part of their ability to add tokens into their contract. From what I but understand, I hear you though, somebody that, I'm trying to understand that. Like, what's so somebody telling me? That there's somebody told me there's like a proxy. Somebody told me there's like a proxy contract that sits on top of the normal contract, and they can they can change the rules of it. Basically, I think they can like they can change how much is being burned. They can change. I'm sorry, you, what, Roy? Only what the percentages. So they can they can change it. So actually, clarify this for me because somebody told me this yesterday. Can they actually change the tax or whatever the little ten percent you guys pay every time you sell? Can they change that to a hundred percent? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you guys so, but do, like this is you guys the nature understand. the nature guys, of code. Like, there's nothing stopping there's nothing stopping someone from changing one thing and not another thing unless there's some kind of consensus mechanism, a la Bitcoin, that prevents arbitrary changes from being able to be distributed through the network and used. So I'm looking for anything along those lines other than someone said this, because that's not actually a, a thing in place. John, that's just yeah, we're us. looking, we're looking for proof, basically. You see, no, nobody's been able to change Bitcoin's contract ever. Bitcoin doesn't have a contract. Uh, hey, DJ, let's, uh, let's, let it's me go ahead. Bitcoin's a protocol, and it actually just did have a major upgrade. Um, the Taproot upgrade is actually pretty significant, and it took about four years for them to get that upgrade through. But that was agreed upon by the whole network that that was going to happen. Programmers that that made that change, though, right? Of course. So the way, and, and, so the way it works, DJs, is that um, anybody can like push updates onto the network, but the network, like, it's it's, it's, it's actually decentralized every individual node and miner has to choose to upgrade it. So what happened is like when Taproot was ready to go, what they did is they, they sent it out to the miners first who started doing what's called signaling. They started putting out blocks that were ready to like, they were showing that they could accept and like transact with Taproot blocks. And then the rest of the nodes had the ability to upgrade and like move into that network. Basically it's like, it like start, it's, it's called a soft fork. It just starts a completely different network that's still interoperable with the old network. It's so always like, backwards compatible, so you actually have yeah. miners that are running several versions older software. It's all; it must all actually work. Yeah, right. Yeah. You all migrate. All the miners migrate. No, they don't migrate. The so nodes do. If they, anyone from SafeMoon could, uh, anyone on the SafeMoon army, explain to me what the difficulty adjustment in Bitcoin is, um, I would love to hear someone explain any fundamental aspect of how. Bitcoin actually has value. See, you guys are missing are you the actually, fundamental prerequisites for I'm this a, thing are, to be valuable. You, you're ask, you're asking about hash power upgrades. I'm just he's talking. About, he's like, talking about what gives the whole system value. Yeah, you because the value is not. He wants to know how much of the fundamentals you guys understand. Like what I, makes I, Bitcoin valuable? I, I have a buddy who runs a farm, so each having it gets. <laughs> I didn't say having more. All right, hold on. Let me let me let's, let's see, let him finish. What's up, Dijens? No, so like it, it each having uh, the actual uh, the actual stuff that the miners have to figure out uh, gets the more issuance. Different. It's called the issuance. The no, no, no! Of... Don't interrupt him. He didn't say that. That's he was talking about something yeah, else. Yeah, let him Please let finish. him finish. Let him Literally finish. Just... Talking about my understanding of mining farms and stuff like that, I got a buddy who runs a mining pool and runs a mining farm down the street from me. 
So the having the having is not the same thing as the difficulty adjustment, um, but it's another very important aspect of the sort of economy of Bitcoin. Um, the difficulty adjustment happens every 2016 blocks. And what it's attempting to do is calculate, what it does is it calculates how much time per block in that last period of 2016 blocks. And if it's greater than 10 minutes per block, then it's going to reduce the difficulty. Because if it took longer, that means it's too hard. So it reduces the difficulty. If they happen faster than 10 minutes per block, then the difficulty increases. So essentially, as the hash rate goes up, the difficulty goes up. And when the hash rate total in the network goes down, the difficulty goes down. That's the difficulty adjustment. And it's happening roughly every two weeks these days. SafeMoon is built but, but, on Binance Smart that Chain. Spice that you're seeing yeah. on, on the network or, or finding the hash rate and adjusting are, are actually longer than that. It's not every two weeks. No, so, okay, so DJs, the way it works is that the, the Bitcoin network tries to target an average block time of 10 minutes. So that means it tries to put out one block every 10 minutes, uh, give or take. Sometimes it happens faster, sometimes it has it slower. But like over a long period of time, if you like take the average, that's what it's trying to reach. It's trying to get 10 minutes. So what happens is um, as miners come online, because, you know, they want to get the rewards or whatever, they add more hash rate to the network, which is just basically computers like guessing at trying to get this puzzle so they can win the blocks. So what the network does is that if there's too much, if there's too many miners, like and and the the difficulty is too easy, uh, after 2016 blocks, it increases the difficulty to right. readjust to try to get back to that 10 minute block time. So like if if randomly a shitload of miners came online and the block time suddenly went from 10 minutes to like five minutes. The network will keep doing that for like those 2,000 blocks, but after those 2,000 blocks, the difficulty will adjust up to try to make it hard again so that it, um, it goes back to 10 minutes. And then it goes the other way too. If people unplug, it gets easier. So, so Satoshi invented an economic machine of energy and technological advancement in like creating these hash boards and chips. So um, you guys really need to understand that like none of these altcoins, not Ethereum, not Binance Smart Chain, none of these altcoins are an improvement on Bitcoin. It's just not going to happen, dude. There is no like next Bitcoin. You can, you can ever say that though. You, if you so, understood so, what, what we're DJ talking me. about, you would come to that conclusion the as thing well. Is, the thing is, DJs, that um, once you once you get like more into the nitty gritty of like what's the real innovation here, you realize that it's not like transaction speed or any of this stuff. The real decentral, or excuse me, the real innovation is the proof of work. The proof of work on the network is the only thing that like is new here, that is completely different than anything else, and like what allows the network to be everything it is: decentralized, secure, all these things. The proof of work is the innovation. Is basically what I'm trying to say. Hi. Very true. But to cause it, to cause it, everybody around the world to use it, I mean, I, I, don't, I, I feel like there's no... You can, you, can, you can compare Ethereum, Solana to no, I'm competitors not, like I'm stock exchange. Not Let, let's, leave, let's leave specific altcoins out of this. I hate that, that I get interrupted any time I try to talk. Like, I mean, I've... Just I'm go sorry, ahead, buddy. You're fine. Yeah, you're right. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just trying to say... I'm not saying that Bitcoin will not always be what it is. And but will other people try to figure out ways to make it better? I mean, I've I've seen half proof of work proof of stake. I mean, you you've got the the amount of transactions on OpenSea is ridiculous. And I mean, am I saying that's right? No. I mean, would they've been promising that they're going to reduce gas fees forever? But what I'm what I'm saying is that uh, what Satoshi created, right? The, the whole proof of work, it's done. It's in your wallet, and it's done within ten minutes and can be balanced where, it, you know, whatever. Do you, do you understand what it's actually doing, though? Like, do you understand why, like, what why the proof of work is important? I mean, I I, I understand that people people uh, set up miners. And and try to make money out of this. Yeah, but I'm not that's, talking about the money. One, I'm not hold on TC. Hold on TC. Yeah, I'm not talking about the money aspect of it. I'm trying. I'm I'm telling you, like, what is 
why is the network why is the network wanting people to like spend electricity what is the proof of work like what is the reason that satoshi implemented proof of work like what's the reason for it uh, he can't change the consensus of the vote or something like that no i i don't think that's well, i mean uh, because that that would just cause it to be the reason that you do it is because there's there's a cost consensus that nobody else can breach you said so, too many words. Fine. It's because there's a cost. There's a real world cost that you can't fake. That's right. what proof of work is. You have so to expend nose... that energy, and that is proof that you've done the work. Yeah, I mean that's 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 proof of labor, though. Then 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 you turn around and get the question. Just of... say work. So the so the thing is that the proof of work is the solution to. Well, I'm sure you've heard this term thrown around, but we're gonna we're gonna go into it right now. Is the Byzantine generals problem? What the Byzantine generals problem is essentially boils down to how do like independent parties? How do you, trust how, do you each... pro- how do you prove labor? Is no, 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 no. Labor? It has nothing to do with that. How do independent parties in a system trust each other without like having? How do they? How do they know they're telling the truth without having to trust each other? It's that's called the Byzantine generals problem, and it's been unsolved for like hundreds and hundreds of years up until Bitcoin. It's the first system that ever came out that actually solved this problem. And the solution is the proof of work because the proof of work, it solves it in an indirect way. So like the, the, the solution that Satoshi came up with is that, okay, the nodes aren't going to, they don't have to trust each other. They don't have to like, they don't have to know what any, what either of them, any of them think. What they're going to do is they're going to believe that the nodes that put out enough electricity are good economic actors that don't want to like screw themselves over and that they're going to actually like play by the rules because if they don't play by the rules they basically shoot themselves in the foot they waste like all this hash rate and they and they lose money basically like they they spend all this electricity and they mine these worthless coins that's how like that's how proof of work solves the Byzantine generals problem and like the nodes don't have to trust each other and DJs like like it sounds it might not even sound like it's it's meaningful until you realize that that problem it's the same problem that we have in the world it's like you are dependent on trust in all these relationships that end up defining I, the value of your lifetime. I actually, and like that's actually, the problem here. Hold on a second. I don't actually have to worry about that because I mean I've told several business owners, several any any people I've ever met, why in the world are you hiring somebody to do something that this this sounds like a internet fix for distrust among labor it, it has nothing to do with labor Dude, you're, that, you're caught on the word work you're like caught on the word work let's let's call it something else let's call it proof of electrical burn or proof of waste or proof of of labor i don't know it's 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 just it's a it can be called it ties it to the maybe real maybe call it like proof of work seriously yeah. and like dgens you're you're also like missing like what's this like what's this thing that we keep talking about it's like decentralization isn't just a fucking marketing word it actually means something security oh, yeah. actually means something it, it's it's away from everybody like, else actually to- like having a bearer asset means hold something. on cc let, 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 let him respond what's up dj no I, I i mean i understand what you guys are saying like a, a thousand percent i i just you know it's one of those i i guess my question is do you, do you you guys think Bitcoin will be the end all, and that's the protocol that will actually beat every other protocol? I mean, I I have no idea. Yes. it will. Yes. And, 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 and that's that's, that's fine if it does. I'm not here to argue anti Bitcoin because because ultimately I just nobody like, nobody thinks you are, bro. We like I just think you're I trying to like, learn, and that's cool. That's it. I think you have to project out further and say to yourself, what is this whole thing I'm doing trying to find the winner if well, all I mean, that matters? If all that matters is that you traverse the next couple of years of this like global money crisis and like remain intact. Like maybe that's more important and, and see, than like see, flipping see, a monkey I'll, picture. I'll, I'll even correct I'll even correct you there. I I didn't get into crypto just blindly into crypto. I I spoke with a buddy of mine who is fully into crypto who can give me anything I want. I can send him money. He can send me money. He sent me Bitcoin. He can send me whatever I wanted. Yeah, I started in the lower version of of low market caps and stuff like that. 
and I've worked my way up. I'm I'm not some DJ that like has lost everything or spent everything on anything at all. Go go on um and go on YouTube like and see funny though. Go, but go on YouTube DJs and, and see. I, I initially started out trying to understand what the fuck Bitcoin was, and that's why I can have these conversations with you guys. Different than happy, uh, happy that you made money, man. I, I, I'm, I'm seriously happy that you actually made money. But again, in order, since you made this boat of money, you have to make sure you re, you conserve this boat of money, right? Now you're trying to. So there's two things. You're either trying to make money, or you're no. I mean, I, I, I stopped your money. My, right? my, my, my DeFi. My exactly, De- DeFi. What's DeFi? My, my what's, De- my De- one second, one second, Dijon. What's DeFi? DeFi is basically you have your pond of assets Here's and you're trying point. to make sure you're growing it and not burning it, right? That that's DeFi basically. You're, well, you're Titan, trying to get yield Titan, out of it. Titan, have you heard of Over have you heard of BitConnect again? Because that is what DeFi essentially is. Essentially, DeFi is a public BitConnect. I mean, if you want to consent- connect with the scam, that's fine. It was a Ponzi, but yeah, exactly. Again, I'm trying to explain. Bong. Moon, moon. <laughs> hey, Brian, can I say something? Oh, it's me. Hey, man, what's up? I asked you earlier. Um, did you get your stuff out of the uh, out of the yeah. paper wallets? Yeah, so I went to uh, an exchange, like a currency exchange, where they also play with uh, crypto and gold. And uh, yeah, the the guy knows about it. Uh, he scanned it for me. It's legit. I went to the, uh, it's inside a mall. So I went to the B- Bitcoin ATM. I scanned it too. It's all legit. But listen, about uh, Safe Moon uh, printing uh, tokens. Yes, they can because they already did it before. So when we moved from v one to v two, yes, they can over and over and over while you were right next to that thing. Okay, Wait, anyways, hold, uh, hold on, what's up, man? So, what, they so can? They, they can, and they already did it. So when we moved from v one to v two, for us to move from v one to v two, every single holder had to take a ten percent hit because of the v one contract. So what they did is, is they minted all that ten percent from every single holder that moved. So they yes they are fortunately able to mint more, and they already did it. Have you guys seen that game Tron? You and all it's the, like all it's partly the 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 weird blue teal color that you guys rock, but it's also like this idea that you're like in this game that someone else built, and you guys are like paying taxes participants in a in a in a Hunger Games of Safe Moon. Yeah, paying taxes on top of your cashing out and cashing in um, uh, a cap gains tax or cap loss. Biden told me he would sell me all his Bitcoin for 0.01 ETH. Hey, Brian. Wow. Brian. What's up, bro? So, so uh, I was talking to Reef uh, today. So he gave me a, a, a lot of knowledge about work of proof and work of stake. You know what I mean? I didn't understand that stuff, right? Work of stake. That sounds fascinating. Tell me it's, more. It's all, bro, it's all good, TC. He's learning. And bro, and I'm really, let me tell you, it's me, man. I really am happy that you guys are like more open minded about this. Like, I, I don't, don't believe anything anybody tells you. You can literally go and verify everything like we're telling you for yourself. So, anyway, so what I did is I sold all my other positions today and I bought more Bitcoin. Other than my safe one, I didn't sell my safe one because that's, that's great, my, man. That's, that's my fucking God right there. Yeah, so I I sold my Ethereum and uh, my I didn't sell my BNB, but yeah. I sold my uh, uh, Cosmo, my Polkadot, and my V Chain, and I bought all uh, Bitcoin with it. You know, BNB is kind of like a huge regulatory target. The, yeah, I know. The I regulatory see, agencies I are really looking at BNB. I, I just want to see where it goes. If it, if it doesn't move that much in the next like six months, a year, I'll probably get rid of it. But yeah, <laughs> if only wanna, you could migrate your tokens to Airbnb. <laughs> That would be cool. Just tell tell him to migrate his BNB to to BSC, and then he can migrate that from from there to something else to BTC. Anyway, yeah, it's it's me, man. I like that. My goal. I've already said this like four times already. My goal is just to like 
everybody to approach their situation with like being honest with themselves. If you decided that that was the right move for you for BTC, that's great, man. That really is like, I'm glad you're like, you're starting to understand what's going on here. But um, yeah, no, I really like, I really want everybody to make money. Like th- you guys have to look at like your positions at what you're doing. Like you have to be honest with yourselves. If you're trying to like gamble and make money, that's cool. As long as you're honest with yourself and you don't think like, oh yeah, I'm going to mortgage my house and I'm going to be a billionaire by tomorrow. Like that you have to be realistic and you have to be truthful to yourself. Because if you're not, the only person you're hurting is yourself, ultimately. Always track your transactions too. Like use a coin thing or something. Please, please you track your transactions while you do it because you're going to have a tough time while you actually do taxes too. I've heard that from a lot of people and I'm always careful. So, um, but but a coining works good. Try it. Try it out. Yeah, especially if you're trading a lot. You you want you don't want the tax man to jump at you with a surprise bill. No, I, I think there's a video game out there where it's it's you don't get taxes. You just play the video game, no taxes. Bro, what that's the fuck awesome. are you talking about? Bro, they don't do taxes. You have to you have to report your taxes. That's your duty. <laughs> they can they can say anything they want. DJ is fucking with you guys, bro. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you guys forgot I was here. Not, not what I'm here. <laughs> no, yeah, let's, let's, let's let participate. Talk. Participate, bro. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing, guys? <laughs> I enjoy listening to you guys. And I do want the name of that game, by the way. <laughs> hey, um, just I just got a couple of questions for you guys. So, um, you know, I um, I um, uh, I have a little a little bit of money in Bitcoin, and every time I uh, listen to you guys or I read a little more, I learn a little more. But, uh, you know, I think you guys remember about three weeks ago when um, uh, there was a, a rise up that occurred in Kazakhstan uh, due to the uh, cost of energy. Do, yeah, do, I remember do, that. Okay, so Kazakhstan currently holds 18% of the Bitcoin mining globally. The U.S. holds about 35%. And the U.S. went from about 5 or 6% last year at approximately the same time, I think, uh, to about uh, 35%. And of course, China, you know, made it illegal. Uh, and um, m- m- the question that I have is uh, just kind of curious. What do you guys think uh, over the next two decades when the uh, 10% remaining that needs to be mined uh, gets fully mined? How will that affect the price of uh, Bitcoin? Or or maybe it will not affect the, the, yeah. Course, yeah, the price participate. of Bitcoin? I think, I think the last Bitcoin can only be mined by 2140. You can't yeah, it's, a, it's, it's early, a little less than 120 right? years currently, and we don't know if the block time is going to slow down at some point. And it could end up being more years, or if the block time sped up and it's less years. But it's you, none of us probably will be alive when when that occurs. I, I so, like think, think about it like think about it like this: participates 90 percent of the coins have been mined already, and like right. this thing hasn't even reached global adoption. It's just starting to reach that, and there's only 10 percent like new coins to be mined. The 90% okay. that are already in circulation are basically being hodled. Like, people aren't selling them. So, I mean, okay. the rest of the world has to fight for the remaining 10% that are about to come into circulation over the I next, like, 120 years. I think it's 35. It'll be 95%. But, 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 so, yeah, that's yeah. how fast the next 5% is going to go. Exactly. It's going to be, like, 12 years. My, my understanding is that uh, uh, there, there will have to be mining incentives at that point. Uh, there already are. So this is are. the thing. That's what this whole system is already, is that the incentive is there. What we tried to explain to you before about the difficulty adjustment. DJ, hold on. The difficulty adjustment will take care of the incentive structure. That's like one of the biggest innovations here, is that as the hash power increases, it's going to be more difficult. It's already, and, already in- and at the same time, we have, we have supply impacts of the halvings. And we have an impact in the change in the behavior of the miners who, for the first decade of Bitcoin, for the most part, they all, a lot of miners used the Bitcoin they mined to pay for their operations. And now there's a big sea change where the miners are now holding Bitcoin. And a lot of these big miners are actually buying Bitcoin on top of mining it. So the whole whole system is shifting. (laughs) I, I do have a question. And the supply is still fixed. Yeah, TC, can you give me a second to speak back to you? You have 10 TC's seconds. Just, TC's just passionate, bro. 
All right. I've got a guy who runs a thousand miner farm and he sells. And if it becomes unprofitable, he's going to shut down the farm, which I'm, I'm sure that's how any of this works. But what I'm saying is while he makes money, he sells his Bitcoin every time he gets the Bitcoin. Don't. So what's, what's what the do question? You mean don't. It's not me. This this is a dude who runs. A, I'm talking about it. He, if he's selling, if he's selling less than market price, let us know, bro. I, I'll buy it. It's yeah, not I mean, about market price. The point of Bitcoin is not to just convert it all to fiat the moment you get it. If so, why are you I mining? I understand that. I'm just saying there are there are miners out here. There are electricians and miners out in the U.S who have created farms that they know that it's profitable for the time being, they will shut down that farm as soon as it's non-profitable. Yo, anybody want, anybody want to step down to let Nate up? Yeah, I can go. I can go down. Uh, Thank you for having me guys. Thank you very much. It was no problem, bro. But, but yeah, DJ, if he's giving one BTC for 0.1 ETH, let me know. I'll, I'll I'll convert my, yeah, I'll go right now. Hit me up. DM me. I got you. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Anyways, uh, good night, guys. Peace. I'll be see before everything you see. All right. Hey, let me uh, let, let me share a little bit of uh, uh, so, some of the stuff that I work on, um, and I won't give you too much details. But um, um, uh, I work for a uh, company that supplies power power devices to uh, data centers, and uh, we supply solutions to uh, uh, Bitcoin miners. And uh, one particular company that we sell to. Um, actually um, uh, creates these modular data centers. They spend a ton of money, and uh, within uh, uh, 10 months, they break even, and they use them for two years. They are extremely profitable, extremely profitable. Uh, and um, the uh, one thing that uh, I do also want to mention is that I really believe that as the transition of mining uh, bring you know uh, is carried over over to the U.S. because the U.S. is growing faster than any other country when it comes to capturing that opportunity. I think that in the next few years, the U.S. is going to get a lot of pressure through the amount of energy that they're consuming. Perhaps Texas and Arizona won't mind, but uh, you know, just from some of the uh, uh, progressives, uh, just in terms of the amount of energy they're consuming, I think uh, total. In total consumption globally, they consume as much as uh, the Ukraine or Argentina consumes as a whole. That's a lot of goddamn energy, but uh, I'm not sure that they are. They will win at the end. I think Bitcoin will continue to be mined. Um, but um, in terms of the uh, transition over to the U.S., guys, uh, you know, is there any any impact that you will have on the price at all? Whether you know we the U.S. goes from it went from 6% to 35 and eventually maybe up to like 65% of the mining. Will that affect the price in any which way or it doesn't matter? I mean, I, I, I don't think it will. I, 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 elect, electrical prices in the United States are so damn high. I'm, I'm unsure that we'll ever breach any percentage of the matters. Big um, mining. Do- Couple things, DJs. Does he tell you how much of a percentage he sells after his rewards for the month, or does he just sell it all? I, he, he just flat out sells it, man. I mean, he's he's got an electrician buddy. They've got a warehouse. They've got. I mean, he's you know spent the money that he spent. Okay, cares. He's he's probably in profit if he's still doing it. Um, yeah, I would he, say he, I, he, I listen to a lot of miners talk he, about this kind he, of thing. He can flip off the breakers. Like, that's it. If it becomes unprofitable for him, he will flip the breakers off. I mean, it, it's just kind of one of those things. You know, you know what I'm saying? If, if he's smart, he probably talked to the power company and he worked out a at least a tiered deal that lowered his rates a little bit, which probably worked out for the best. The right. question- I'm not sure that you've actually talked to me before. I've, I've worked on a, a gigabit... Uh, a farm we we learned about how to grow marijuana in the south and stuff like that so i mean i i know exactly what you're talking about but yeah the way the way that this guy is he's he's a power guy he's getting reduced power costs but yeah i mean if it becomes unprofitable yeah light light shut off on he's probably that. he's probably getting like buying coins for about ten thousand a coin that's that's the average of like i think four 
four cents. Uh, yeah, that's like that's like our coins are being mined out right now. They're yeah. So and that's and you know, that's without uh, adding in. Well, that's probably with equipment and things like that. Over time, it gets better, of course, because it's already paid for. Um, the question about the the hash rate and being the U.S. that was migrated from China. So that that's where a lot of that came from, either by uh, you know just secondhand purchases. A lot of them sold off, but we we saw a mic just a pure migration of. Chinese miners come over here or to Kazakhstan or uh, just around the globe in general to, to low power centers or low cost power centers, uh, renewables and such. Um, miners are going to proliferate around the globe naturally with just basic incentives. The more, more mining companies buying more mining uh, miners, the emergence of new companies and things like that, especially in Canada, they have a lot of isolated power sources and uh, hydro so uh, I think just in general, we're just going to see the natural progression. We're starting to see new ASIC chips, chips come from Intel, and that's going to accelerate over the next 10 years since they're, they're actually backed by the DOD. They're putting $240 billion into their, their chip foundries, which are four plants in the U.S. that are going to be built up. And well, honestly, it's like that's a really good buy if you're going to do stocks. Like in 10 years, Intel is going to be insane. Um, when are they debuting a miner? Do you know, Nate? No, I haven't kept up on that. I, I just the news that we heard Not through financial spaces. advice. Take <laughs> fuck, fuck that, dude. <laughs> if if they're going to be the other like main source of chips, I I would say it's a pretty good bet. Um, but yeah, I mean we're, we're seeing a lot of people move away from having everything being manufactured in the east. Um, and this is a great natural, like it's a, it's a national security issue that we can produce our own chips. So that's why it's backed by the DOD. They initially put 20 billion into the project Intel did alone. And they just announced, uh, what, three months ago that they're adding another 220 billion. So it, it's going to happen. Um, and that's jobs, it's infrastructure, that's every, like that's just pure good for everybody. Yeah, so, so do you see what's so do you see what's happening here, participate? It's like um it's a global competition for energy and like chip manufacturing. And so like what that's gonna do is it's gonna naturally lead to cheaper electricity because ultimately what what Bitcoin miners are trying to do, like at their basic, is they're trying to convert electricity to BTC as cheap as possible. They wanna get electricity as close to zero as humanly possible. And yeah. so, like, what this is doing is it's incentivizing people to invest in energy infrastructure and renewable energies and cheaper sources of energy, like gas blaring and stuff like that, so that they could get, a, like, energy as close to zero as possible. And, like, we're going to start seeing that happening in the United States. Just, um, didn't this happen just a couple of weeks ago with Texas where they were, um, like, Bitcoin miners were, were going into overdrive and then, like, the winter storm hit them. And then suddenly the, um, the city's grid was willing to pay more for the electricity and so the miners shut off and like all that, all that electricity that was being used for mining just instantly got routed to um, the cities because it was more profitable for the energy companies. Yeah. The, 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 um, the, um, the supply of energy, ultimately that's what caused the, uh, the eruption, the civil eruption in Kazakhstan. They actually double or triple the uh, cost of energy. Um, the, the one thing, uh, you know, so for instance, uh, we provide something called PDUs and uh, power supplies and all of the stuff for the racks that go into those Bitcoin miners, uh, for either for data centers or for large spaces that are really just racks upon racks. I mean, this, is, this shit looks like a warehouse. Literally, they're actually like warehouses and they're actually racked on top of each other or they're on shelves. And uh, there's something called PDUs that provide power distribution units that provide the power or the outlets to for the uh, miners to actually get connected into. And then, of course, a three-phase UPS power for backup systems and all that stuff. And these guys are cheap as hell. Uh, you know, they are looking for something uh, that is as cheap as possible, uh, and they're willing to replace it every two years. It, it's really a very unique. These are not the most sophisticated IT you know, people that you deal with. Uh, but, you know, they want to negotiate, and uh, they want the product as soon as possible. And uh, when he's ready to throw it away, they have no problem. Even if it's still usable for another year, they'll trash it and replace the whole thing. It's a really unique industry. And like I said, the company that I work for, we make millions of dollars in that industry. And um, uh, I've, uh, because of that, I've looked into uh, Bitcoin a little bit more than uh, normally I would have. And then I found this space and I uh, got educated a little bit more. So, no, I'm just trying to learn, guys. That's all.
Yeah, man, that's cool. And like my spaces are all that's that's all I that's what I want that's what I want these spaces to be for people to learn and like ask questions and don't feel intimidated. Because I I understand that like when you guys talk to Maxis, like we, people can get hostile sometimes. But uh, yeah, no, I just feel like there are people who are legitimately looking for knowledge out there, and it's just like I don't know. I think that we I think that we could just be more more open to people who are actually looking to like ask questions. I mean, I, I think that's the best way that you can actually try to educate other people. I mean, that's just my own thoughts on stuff. Yeah, I agree. It's um, and I mean, really I, like I can I can be ridiculous. I will admit to everybody here, I can be ridiculous as fuck, <laughs> like ninety percent of the time. But I. Ultimately, I do have questions, and uh, you guys have answers to those questions 90% of the time. Yeah, man, and I really do wish I had all the answers. There's a lot of stuff that I, I'm not sure about, and um, I'll be the first one to tell you when I don't know. It's like, it's such a, it really is like a revolutionary technology, and so it's like, I, I really do believe it's going to change the world, and everybody should try it like their hardest to to set aside any biases and any stuff that like, they may like feel towards it and they hear from other people and actually like dig into the weeds and like do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Cause I, I really do feel like it's going to be a world changing thing to, to do it together. Right. Brian. I mean, I, I, I listened to the offline of you guys like the other day and the shit was wild. <laughs> like people were screaming at each other, all type of shit. Yeah, it got it got heated that night. Um, I learned though. I learned it. if I ever do something like that ever again, I'll uh, I'll definitely take some of those lessons I learned and apply them there. Anyway, um, it's almost like twelve in the morning over here, and the space been going on for a little bit. Sky, I know you just got on. I'm about to run. You know what, Sky? Talk for a minute. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll keep it going for like another couple of minutes. I talked for a minute. Come oh, on. you could rug it. I just, I didn't even mean to join as a speaker. I was just going to listen. Nah, if, if Brian rugs you, I'm, I'm going to yell at him. <laughs> How'd you end up here, DJs? She'll just fucking, she'll just I, talk shit at me on my DMs. DJs is DJs. <laughs> I, 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 places, I saw you here and I was laughing. <laughs> you're not you're not too drunk tonight though. You sound pretty good. Nah, yeah, I got I got super work tomorrow. Oh damn. Yeah, right, DJ. You had a lot of drink already. Lots of drinks already. Yeah, you, Dude, d- you definitely oh, drink, but you don't think sound I, super I sloppy. Think I'm, super drunk. I'm actually super funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's literally what I am. <laughs> No, my favorite part about you, I was just saying to Brain, is that when you do get way too drunk at some points, you're just like, we could just boot you off and you come back tomorrow and you're never mad. You're just like, go to bed, d and then you just go away. And then d comes back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we start all over. Yeah, guys, I'm going to be I'm gonna be closing down the space. Yeah, rugged. It was it. good talking to everybody. Yeah, I'm going to rugged this guy. Bye. You'll be mad at me later. No, no, man. Have a good night. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> night, bro. <laughs> Have a good night, guys.